I have a few questions here. Erica's going to go around and hand out cards again. Um, I didn't see very many people writing questions, so she'll be walking around throughout uh, the next 30 minutes to pick up the questions for people. So please feel free to ask your questions. So the first question is for Ellen. Uh, the question is, where and how do we ration health care as we must? We ration health care all the time right now. And we ration it in a very irrational manner. <laughs> so I think it's going to not be as hard as we think to move to more rational rationing. Um, obviously, there are a lot of things we do in our healthcare industry that don't deliver a lot for what they cost, and we just have to come to grips to some of that with some of that. And it's mostly not nearly as dramatic as as the. Um, you know, the, the dire predictions of what is it, pulling the prog on grandma, um, you know, that is not helpful to the conversation at all. Um, people have procedures all the time that really don't deliver much in terms of quality of life, and um, that information is never really even shared with them. They may realize it later, but um, I think there are ways to get there, and um, they've got to be better than what we're doing now. So the next question is for the mayor. Um, the question is, it seems like there are some contradictory goals. Um, one is non-motorized downtown area, and another one is that there are new parking lots being proposed that are controversial. Uh, the question is, how are the two goals being reconciled? Well, we're not trying to create a non-motorized uh, downtown because obviously we need places for buses to run and people are still gonna wanna drive cars. But I, I'm sure this questioner is referring to the city's building a new underground parking structure of the city and the DDA. But if you take a look at uh, what's been going on over the last few years and what's anticipated in the next couple of years, the city's losing 700 parking places, uh, at least 700 parking places. Had a, we've taken down one parking structure already. We have another one that's going to be a parking lot that will be turned into a park sometime, hopefully, in the next few years. Um, we have a lot that is privately owned that we now have received a letter that that uh, particular lot is going to be going away in the next couple of years. When you add it all up, you get to around 700 spaces that we're losing. We did a study. Uh, a few years ago now, that laid out some things that we need to do uh, as far as transit, as far as becoming a more transit-friendly study city, a way to get people around better. And we are acting on every recommendation that was in that study to tell us what to do. They also said that we were virtually full at about 85% capacity and that we needed to do something about that. So we couldn't sit around and let our downtown go away because we couldn't provide the parking. But I want to expand a little bit on, on another a larger issue here, uh, let alone the fact that we have under, parking should be underground. If you go to a modern European city, you will find the parking is underground. But the other factor that I think people don't look at very much, uh, we have a wonderful program in our city called for the Green Belt, and it's making great strides right now. It's going to per, it's going to preserve local agriculture in this area forever, which feeds into what people what Jeff was saying and some others were saying what Lisa were saying, we're going to have local agriculture here forever, but a big part of that effort was to stop sprawl. When you have people spread over the countryside, it does not work for transit. Uh, there are so many other ways that people living in compact cities are good for the environment. But one of the problems is the townships can offer unlimited surface parking, and that is what draws businesses to township areas. It's cheap. They'll just pave over acres and say you need to park. Um, people who want to settle in the downtown a company like Google. Google really encourages their people to use transit. They really encourage, encourage their people to bicycle, and yet they would not have come to downtown without guaranteed parking. And if you don't have parking in your city centers, you are driving people outside of the city to the fringe areas uh, around your city. So I think there's very good reasons why we need more, at least to replace the parking that we're losing in our downtown area, which is really all that we're doing. We're not, uh, over the next few years, we'll lose enough parking that our new structure will really just be a replacement for that. And again, I don't want to see us driving people and the places where they work out to the suburbs and paving over the townships around us. Okay, thank you. So the next question uh, is for, well, I suppose uh, both Lisa and uh, John can decide who wants to take it. Questions about Argo Dam. Can the dams on the Huron River be upgraded for local electrical power? I'm going to get that. <laughs> uh, I also sit on the city's energy commission. Obviously, it's something I'm interested in, but it's easy when you can appoint yourself. Um, 
We've been looking very closely at the dams. Uh, we had a study done uh, last year. It probably wasn't as complete as it could have been, but Argo um, would probably not be the dam that we would electrify first. It would be Gallup. There's a 50% uh, greater uh, capacity for electricity generation over at Gallup. Um, as you may know, Gallup, uh, Argo used to develop electricity at one time originally, and it just wasn't doing very well because you have another dam just upstream as part of it, and the city at years and years ago took out the electrical generation. It's guessed that it would be about a 35-year payback to re-electrify the dam at this time. However, um, I don't, I mean, we're working with the DEQ right now. I don't think if you're a rower, I don't really see Argo Dam going away. Uh, I think that there are some other benefits for that, and what the Energy Commission is thinking is that as time goes on and electricity becomes more and more valuable, that ratio may change as far as how much it's going to cost to, to re-electrify the dam, as well as the fact that new technologies are making water flow, that, giving us new ways to tap into water flow. So we, it may be prudent for us to wait around a little while with Argo Dam to keep, let these new technologies come out, which are more efficient, and, and there's a lot of talk about that right now. Uh, and to try to make some choices at a later date about what we're going to do with Argo Dam. But again, if we were going to electrify, we would probably look at Gallup first. And uh, it's very possible. We have an organization in town that has expressed some interest, and that's the Vest Veterans Hospital, in helping to fund that. So we might look in that direction. Uh, right now, of course, we're making hydro over at uh, Barton and at, at the dam on Superior.